we all have those tools that we love and that we really appreciate, but we don't show that appreciation. And then there are certain tools that we show a lot of appreciation of and we really take care of them. And we show it by making them look pretty and keeping them clean. But the truth of the matter is, there are tools that we don't necessarily need, but yet we take care of them. And then there are tools that we sometimes need. So I love trolling YouTube and watching videos on woodworking shops or metal working shops or any sort of shop environment. And I love the contrast between a clean shop and a dirty shop. There are some beautiful shops out there that have the most expensive woodworking equipment that are highly sponsored by these woodworking companies, machine companies. They're very clean, they look like retail stores. And then you have the, the contrast, the other side, where you have a real functioning woodworking shop or a metal shop that's dirty, grimy, rusty, smelly. I love those kind of shops. When I was a service technician years ago, I lived out of my car basically 24 seven and drove around the countryside. We used to have these quarterly reviews and my boss said to me, kind of stuck with me all these years, a dirty car is a busy man. A clean car has all the time in the world to clean his car. That just stuck with me all of these years. So in appreciation of all of these tools that are not appreciated, I'm gonna take on this project over the next couple of months of shop infrastructure. Taking inventory of what I have and what I don't really need and really streamlining the process and, and the flow, the workflow. Because although I love the sentiment of a dirty shop is a busy shop, we also all know that a clean shop is a safe shop and a clean shop is a productive shop with which enables us to be efficient and effective in what we're trying to do right so my objective for the next few months is to kind of streamline this workspace and, and set up and put out what i most certainly use quite often and put away the stuff that i don't use because that just gets in the way or ends up being something that you clean all the time but you don't really use I mean, don't get me wrong. We all love those nice, clean, shiny shops. But I also love the dark, grimy, grungy work areas where you know some serious working has been happening there. Although I'm more partial to that type of work environment, I also know that to be, to be effective in whatever I'm doing, I need to be organized and I need to be clean and I need to have some sort of system. <sighs> Drywall saw. I just found myself moving it around from area to area because it got my way. We all have this, craft paper. Comes in handy. I usually end up putting it in the corner or on my drill press. And sometimes we get into the habit where we're such in the zone of doing whatever projects we're doing. And sometimes we have multiple projects going on, which is always the case. We tend to neglect things. And for me, sometimes I put things out of sight, so out of sight, out of mind, until, until I need that route a bit and I get sidetracked from the frustration of things being neglected. Oh, oh God, oh yeah. I had this on my table saw 
extension as my router table because I needed some extra space and I just never did anything with it and I need to do something with it and how often is the case that we have just so many paint cans sitting around I could use that color paint and then you open it and it's no good and I have so many we have so many toolboxes that we accumulate over the years that really sit there half empty and I don't even know what's in this some router bits hold down clamps and I have probably about 10,000 of these Allen keys from everything that you purchase nowadays. Any little thing that you purchase that you have to assemble, you get a whole set of these, loose pieces of these that you throw in your tool chest, even though you have complete sets of these. I'll save that, because I may need it someday. Now that it's all cleared out, everyone, everyone knows that these tool bases are not very shop friendly. As you can see, it's sitting on a couple of pieces of pine that's not even attached to anything. Therefore, the drill press is not attached to anything and it's kind of wobbly. So I'm going to fix that. I think I'm going to call this video the ultimate drilling station. Every single video on YouTube, the ultimate workbench. Don't get me wrong, everyone loves an ultimate work area. I watch a lot of videos, woodworking videos, where whenever they're building shop furniture or shop fixtures, it's the ultimate. Okay, so, got the area cleaned out. As I said, this is not going to be the ultimate drilling station. <laughs> Far from it. I am reusing a, um, an old cabinet that I uh, picked up from uh, an e-waste pile at work. And um, it's right here actually. It's made out of melamine. It has uh, lock and casters on the bottom. And it has a door nice hinges and shelving on the inside so unfortunately it's not high enough for my height for I lost a wheel somewhere yeah I lost a wheel where did it go anyway so unfortunately it's it's too low for the drill press for my height so I need to create a box essentially on top of it to elevate the drill press. Where did that wheel go? Uh, oh, I found it. I got it. It's uh, 15 and 3 quarters. Why not? Sometimes you gotta make compromises on what you own. And you know, the more, I guess what I'm trying to get at is I wanted for so long a battery cordless brad nailer. Even though I'm impulsive and I buy expensive things like we all do, for whatever reason I could not get myself to buy one because you know to get a really decent one you're looking at like 400 you know 300 change to 400 dollars just for the nailer and there's really no return on that type of investment because you know pretty much i could do the same thing with all my pneumatic nailers and um 20 and a half right 20 and a half 20 and a half and uh, 
you know, so over the years I've collected, as I said, so many ear hammers, you know, from framing hammers to 16, 15 gauge finish nailers and angle nailers and brads and pin nailers. I have so many of them that I just really couldn't uh, justify the cost of me going out buying one single battery operated unit to, to perform the same function as my other ones. You know, so especially, especially that I have superpowers. And I really contemplated it. I really did. I <laughs> keep myself up at night because I really wanted one, but I just could not get myself to buy one. So, needless to say, I did not buy one. And Santa Claus was very generous to me this year. And I received the Ryobi or Ryobi 18 gauge Brad Nailer for Christmas. I've been using this guy on a few projects and I've only charged a battery twice. And I would say cumulatively, probably several hours of projects. And um, like I said, I've only had to charge it twice. And I absolutely love it. Now, it is 18 gauge, it's a brad nail, it takes, I think, anywhere between 5 eighths of an inch to 2 inch in length nails, and, uh, yeah, that's right, okay, <sighs> this one's a long one. And I will say it has all the bells and whistles that you would want, you that you wanted from the pneumatic ones, but obviously they were not included. Like this has, I think if you get down to the last five nails, it actually will not shoot or won't fire because it's telling you that you need to reload. Now I could really get real detailed on the ins and outs of this unit, but there are so many other videos out there that will do a better job than me. I'll just do a huge disservice. The, the ease of use right out of the box is perfect. And I really, to be honest with you, I didn't read the instructions. I probably should have, but um, it's one of those things where you know, you put nails in it, you charge your battery, and uh, you see how it works. And then if it doesn't work to, you know, to how you like it, then you read the instructions and figure out how to do the adjustments. And uh, that's how I roll anyway. For all those little projects that we put off in our house, ah, I don't feel like grabbing the air compressor, I like listening to the noise. Ease of use in the flexibility of just going wherever you want to go, throw it in the back of your car and take it to a friend's house and have fun with it. For the price point, I was apprehensive because for $119, you know, how good is the quality? You know, that's kind of something I had to ask myself. And I gotta tell you, it feels great in the hand. It's nice and robust, it's well balanced. When you put it down sometimes, it is a little front heavy, but you know, it's a minor complaint. Would I recommend it? It all depends on how you're gonna use it. I don't, I don't know enough about it. I haven't used it enough to know if it can withstand heavy use. You know, like say on a job site, if you're a contractor and you know, you're shooting nails all day long and putting up moldings all day long. Only time will tell, I guess. I mean, these guys have been out for a while now and I, I just see a lot of good reviews on them. I didn't have a wide enough piece, so do it in two pieces. Should be fine. Like I said, it's not the ultimate drill station. It's just the drill station.
probably could have designed this a little better because I didn't give myself access underneath once I have the drill press on here to bolt it down. Hey Joe, why don't you put a drawer? No, it's not the ultimate drilling station. No drawer. Maybe someday. So on the, on the back of this case, there are two flaps that come up that I can just secure this to the existing base. Just provide, it provides a little support where it's not gonna shift around on top. I think the, the overall weight will keep it into place anyway. All right, that works out, it's at a good height. Okay, so there it is. It's just a little shop infrastructure project. Help keep things neat, quick and easy, down and dirty. <laughs> Okay, so I am done, and uh, like I had said before, it's not the ultimate drilling workstation, but it works for me and it's gonna help out tremendously. And it's on casters, locking casters, where I can just move it around if I need to. And it's just a simple little upgrade. Get rid of that old shop open stand. You know, it has to go. So I think this will provide much needed storage and it'll keep the dust off of whatever is stored away. And, you know, obviously I was looking to bring my um, drill press up a little higher as well. So I think that that'll work for a couple of years, you know, and maybe I will put a drawer in there and then I can call it the ultimate drilling station. See you next time.